Um, so I feel like it's a, a bit of right place, right time, but also seeing a vision, which yeah, yeah, and follow yeah, and, ch- and following that vision as well that you had. That's really cool. Yeah, def- I think it it was it was definitely right place, right time. It was being at the start of the branded content thing, you know, and that the whole online video just we're all kind of blowing up yeah uh, but then i think it was also being able to go well actually i'd literally so i remember the, the first year it's like it's almost this is like a little story i almost tell people at work it was like 2000 it must have been like 2009 i think um and i just sort of decided to try and make stuff make content for people like and put them everywhere so i i developed this proposal for chain reaction the guys at chain reaction because uh-huh. i was like right we want to make world cup like daily world cup videos and i was like you guys sponsor them yeah. and then what we'll do is we'll, rather than putting them on our website we'll put them everywhere and uh, i went to eurobike i'd met um this guy called michael cowan who was like i can't remember his position at chain reaction he's like one of the senior guys at chain reaction like still i think he's still there now you know being really involved in a lot of the, kind of the growth of them yeah. you know he was like one of the original guys working there and uh, he's like the busiest guy ever, like the busiest guy running this massive like bike store. And uh, I remember I met him and then I managed to get some of his time at Eurobike. Okay. And I sat down with him and I was like, right, here's what we can do. Like, I want to make videos on all the World Cups. We'll make sure it's branded chain reaction. We'll put them everywhere. And uh, and I'm like super nervous. And I'm like <laughs> online and it was like to do the full World Cup series. I can't remember what the figure was, but it was so small like really? in the scheme of things you know yeah but to me it was like it was literally the difference between going out and getting a job and mm. like having a job you know making cut media or him to be cut into something and kind of keeping going um and uh, he was like this looks really good cool could you send me this through and like i'll follow up and uh and he's like this he's like a really nice guy he raced downhill he was like super open to it um and then i got i sort of went home like sent him over and then i'm like following up i was like you know, and you're like phoning and I'd get his voicemail. And I like, I know he's like super busy like I, and every time I'd be like so nervous. Every week I'd like phone up and phone up and like didn't get him, didn't get him, leave a message like, hi, hey, it's Stu here, Ed, have you managed to look him up? <laughs> and it was like, <clears throat> and I think, so Eurosport is what end of, uh, Eurosport, Euro, um, Eurobike's end of August. Okay. I think it was about two weeks before Christmas. Wow, tight, tight. <laughs> I went, I went, I'll try, I'll try him again. It was like a weekly kind of two or three times, whatever. I just hadn't got, I, you're persistent in a nice, persistent. nice way, <laughs> you know? And it was like the most important deal to me ever. And like, I phoned up Michael um, and I'm like, I was like, and he finally, like he, he picked up the phone and I was like, hi, 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 Michael, like so nervous. Like, I, I just wondered if you had a look at it. He's like, oh, I'm really sorry, Stu. Like, I've just not, like, I haven't, could you just send me it again just now? I was like, yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Like, oh my, you'll send it over. And he was like, yeah, yeah. No, that's great, we'll go with it. And I was like, it was like the most, you know, your common phone. I was like, oh, brilliant, thanks, thanks very much. That sounds great. And I put down the phone, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Like it literally, literally that changed the course of like, gave me a career. Basically. Wow. Wow. And he's like, I don't mean like he, I don't, when I say he didn't get back to me, I don't mean it any other way than he was super busy. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. He, so from that point on, like he was so supportive of my career and so supportive of like as a client. And like, there's a few people early on, like him and Michael Bonney and Chris Porter and stuff like that. They really like mm. helped me, Fraser Copeland as well. And like people who really kind of helped me get off the ground, you know, but it was so funny because I was just persistent. I was so nervous, but then finally, like that next year, just it totally started. Dude, yeah. that that persistence pays off, though, man. How many people just give up on those phone calls, right, and just go, ah, can't do it? And you'd have yeah. been <clears throat> working in a leisure center. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that yeah. it's crazy hard. That thing can just totally change your whole trajectory of your life. Oh, just that persistence honestly. and that dedication man. to doing that. Yeah, really yeah. cool, man. It's um, it reminds me of a of a book I'm reading 